what it came out of um, was a way in which to connect people all around the world on a global scale behind a very simple number that meant a lot more than that. So the good thing about numbers is that they transverse all languages. So I think it's really effective in that sense that 350 has become an international symbol for the safe level of carbon in the atmosphere, but it also has become a hopeful symbol as to you know what we can achieve when we all work together. Um, but I think nationally, because there is such a strong movement around climate, um, I think it is important to have different sectors um, covered under different titles, I guess. So like the Mobilization for Climate Justice is a big group of, co it's a big coalition of organizations and it's focusing specifically on the climate justice aspect, which is, you know, as we transition to take on global warming, um, we need to do it in a fair and um, just way so that the poorest people in the country and around the world don't, you know, get the short end of the stick. There's a platform called 350.org and so we're working in coalition with them and their, their idea is to try and popularize uh, that scientific level, three, 350 parts per million. So for October 24th, which is a global day of action that they called for, uh, you know, our local coalition of 35 peace, justice, environmental, environmental justice and climate justice groups are, you know, promoting 350, but we're also adding a message to it that we want to get back to 350 parts per million, which is the safe levels according to science, but we want to do it in a way that addresses the root causes and acknowledges that the people who are the most impacted by climate change are those least responsible and those most responsible, the rich countries and the corporations in the rich countries have the greatest responsibility for addressing it. If we're thinking in terms of human, human survivability, um, it's not an option. Um, we have to get to 350, that's, that's what the science tells us and science tends to not, not be negotiable. You know, this is, um, there have been a lot of studies, it's, it's um, you know, scientists are, are conceding that this is the number, it's the safe upper limit of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and if we don't, if we don't reduce our numbers, like we're at three, I think we're at like 391 right now, parts per million CO2, and if we can't bring that number back down to 350, by 2050, um, we're all going to be in really serious trouble. The planet's going to be fine, but I'm, I'm worried about the people. <laughs> Getting to 350 is important, but it doesn't even begin to touch in importance to how we get to 350, right? Getting to 350 is only one piece of this puzzle. What really matters is how we get to 350. Are we going to believe the lies and false solutions of the system that got us here? Are we going to allow the corporations who created the problem? Are we going to allow the empire that built its privilege on the backs of people all over this planet to, to craft the solutions? Or are we going to take control and craft those solutions ourselves? Well, what's it going to be? Are we going to craft them ourselves or are we going to let them do it? Some folks are focused on stopping climate change and less focused on how or are not necessarily critical of carbon trading per se or only critical uh, of certain parts of carbon trading like offsets. And others of us feel that, like myself, that uh, the economic system that got us in the, into this mess, you know, the same folks who brought us subprime housing and the housing crisis are not the ones who are going to get us out of it. When it comes to carbon trading, I think, I mean, it's specifically in reference to the, the legislation that was passed through the House of Congress um, and is in the Senate right now. That is a global warming bill that is going to implement an a economy-wide cap-and-trade on um, carbon emissions. And the way in which, you know, this bill got slammed in the process of going through Congress, it turned out to be, you know, not very good at all and sets up a pretty, pretty poor carbon trading system that, you know, gives away a lot of credits and um, d won't actually reduce our CO2 emissions if fully implemented with all the offsets. So I think the idea of implementing that cap and trade system is frustrating to a lot of organizations. They say cap and trade, we say hell no way. Cap and trade! Yeah.
Camp and Trade! You know, here in the Bay Area, groups are a little bit more liberal and a little bit more vocal about um, these certain political aspects so that they're willing to, you know, call it out when it's not going to work. But carbon trading in, as a concept, as a whole, you know, isn't really a bad idea. It's the way in which it kind of got, you know, torn apart in Congress. So, I mean, Greenpeace isn't against the idea of carbon trading, um, but doing it in a fair and equitable way in which, you know, the people actually benefit from it and not the corporations. So it is this big political, you know, question that we have to figure out. But um, I think in general, right now, the carbon trading that people are familiar with got a long way to go to where we actually need to be. So, you know, we're all still figuring out exactly exactly how to message this and, you know, how to all work together. But I think in the end, we're all working for the same thing. Are you going to be part of the bike ride? You bet. When does it start? Right now. You guys have those uh, patches? You got one? Patches? The tide is rising. We're worried about the puppies. We got no badges, but we got patches. Trying to get the word out to save the puppies. You know, we have to take serious measures to turn this thing around, and that it's possible if each and every one of us do our part of it, we can really contribute. And if that's biking around every day rather than taking a car, or taking public transit, that's a great start. My name's Jeff Blumenthal, and uh, I rode with 15 other people from Arcata, California to San Francisco, California, under the 350 banner, which is 350 miles. And uh, we got these sweet jerseys to uh, raise awareness of climate change with everybody we uh, met along the way. Somebody's going to be leading the ride up there. I'll eventually end up there myself. My name's Chris. If any of you want to say hello to me along the way, I'd love to talk to you. We're going to go on a, what will be a version of the future shoreline, wrapping, doing a little wiggling along what will someday be the, the shores, and we'll go under Telegraph Hill and then around over to Fisherman's Wharf, and then we'll loop back on the current shoreline. And the point, of course, is to let people know along the way what it is we're doing. So talk to people. Talk to everybody you come upon. If you have the little blue flyers, make sure you give them out to bystanders who don't know what's happening. Why are we doing this? Because the planet is changing and we're unprepared. Our daily lives are not really organized around what's coming our way. And this is the beginning of a social process of trying to be in communication with each other about how we can restructure our lives, not just about cap and trade, or hoping big companies make good decisions. Of course, they need all the pressure they can get. But we need to talk to each other about how we can live differently and do different work, smart work, that makes the world worth living in and solves a lot of the problems of the ecological crisis we face. So as we create these public spaces, we are already reanimating a public life which capitalism has done so much to destroy. So I welcome you all. I'm very happy to see you all out here. We'll have a great time occupying our city on wheels, in motion. Birds flying high, you know how I feel Sun in the sky, you know how I feel Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel It's a new dawn, it's a new day It's a new life for me, yeah It's a new dawn, it's a new day for me Ooh.